your brother and servant, Ross Michael Ra'ah, first directing all our honor and praise unto the God of our fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, for the Lord our God is one. For we honor, revere, glorify, and worship the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, who have been revealed to us in complete core quality, a perfect power of the Holy Trinity, as we boldly and proudly proclaim, full of faith, that the Lion of the tribe of Judah has conquered and prevailed and loosened the seven seals of the book of Revelation, for which we are witnessing the fall of Babylon and the end of the Gentile world system. So we give thanks and praise unto our great God and Savior, he who was born of a virgin, he who was baptized, he who was crucified, he who died, he who was resurrected on the third day, he who ascended to the right hand of the Father, and he who has revealed his glory, now shared with the Father in the new name of his imperial majesty, Emperor Ali Selassie I. So we give thanks and praise to our blessings to be able to be built up with such a strong faith. And this understanding of faith is such a complete concept for us to, for us to converse and reason upon during this third Torah portion which is lek leka, meaning get thee out, okay? In our Ethiopian and Park, it will read teleta wita, teleta wita, okay? Our Old Testament read will be from Genesis chapter 12, verse one, until Genesis chapter 17, verse 27. Our New Testament reading will be from Romans chapter four, verse one, until verse 25. Our Prophet readings will be from Isaiah chapter 40, verse 27, until chapter 41, verse 16. And as I was mentioning before, this is a great concept for us to speak on for this week, understanding faith, as we are being, as we know ourselves as those who have such a strong faith, who boldly and proudly proclaim that the Lion of the tribe of Judah has prevailed and has conquered Revelations. You know, there's a thousand people you can find on YouTube testifying of the fulfillment of Revelations taking place right now. But who is testifying of how Christ has taken the book within his hand, taken that book of the seven seals within his hand, and has loosened the seals thereof, for which we are able to witness the fulfillment of his book, of his testimonies, of his covenants, and everybody prays and claims to bear witness to the fulfillment of these things. But first, before any of these prophetic fulfillments can be revealed upon the earth, first, the lion, who is the lamb, had to reveal himself to mortal man once more and take that book within his hand to begin the economy of revelations, to begin the ecological, uh, 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 the ecological descent and growth of the prophecy within the book of Revelation that had to be uh, first invoked and first revealed uh, by our great God and Savior, by, by the Lamb himself, who is the Lion, for which we witnessed him stand before the, the, the League of Nations. And he stood before the League of Nations and he brought forth judgment, just as the word proclaimed that he would. So we have that strong faith. And when we're gonna, when, when we, wanna, we wanna understand exactly what faith is. And I pray that everybody has proper study tools when it comes to studying, okay? And whenever we do any definitions of any words, we'll be using the Concise Oxford Dictionary. This is a 1911 first edition, first edition dictionary. And the problem with a lot of us trying to interpret the word is that we're operating off of our, off of current day definitions. When we really need the concise original definitions, okay? These are, uh, this is the same, uh, understanding of English in which the King James was originally translated, okay? And I'll give you a really good example. So, in the Bible, in the Beatitudes, it says, Blessed is he who is poor. Blessed are the poor. And most people would think, okay, a poor person is just, um, let's say a poor person is just somebody who is without, um, someone who is without monetary sustenance. You would, you would think that's what uh, today's definition is. And, and if I, what I'll do is I'll find the new age definition is I'll throw it up on the screen. But I wanna share with you the, the real definition of poor. And the real definition of poor originally was wanting means to procure comforts or necessaries, necessaries of life, okay? 
So wanting means to procure comforts and necessaries of life. And when you take that real definition and then you line it up with the Beatitudes where Christ said, blessed are the poor, what he's saying is blessed are the poor in spirit. What he is saying is blessed are those who are wanting means to procure comforts and necessaries of life in spirit. So blessed are those who are seeking. Remember, notice how when a poor person is constantly thinking of, 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 of their next meal and how to, how to, how, how to, how to add to their, to their lack thereof. That's the way we are supposed to operate in the spirit. We're supposed to always be wanting means to procure comforts or necessaries of our spiritual life. So when we understand these true definitions, we can properly understand God's word. And I was speaking on that because I wanted to share the true definition of faith. And this is this is something that really should, should, should strike a chord for all of us and reveal the nature in which we should appropriate our faith. Faith, as we find in the concise Oxford 1911 dictionary is, spiritual apprehension of divine truth apart from proof apart from proof okay so it's a blessing in these words to help us understand not only our strong faith but help us also be convicted be fully convicted to 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 not only boldly proclaim but to bear witness to our faith which most people would consider uh, uh, attribute of having proof. No, faith is not an attribute of having proof, okay? Let's go to John chapter 20, verse 29. And this will help us understand true faith apart from proof. And that's what we have in His Imperial Majesty, Emperor I. Selassie I. For we have faith in He who was born of a virgin, He who was baptized, He who died, He who was crucified. He who resurrected on the third day, he who ascended to the right hand of the Father, and he who has revealed his glory, shared with the Father in the new name of his imperial majesty, Emperor Isaac Selassie the first. So by us coming into this revelation, by us coming into this revelation, we have not seen Jesus Christ. And this is what a lot of people don't really understand with understanding the divinity of his imperial majesty, Emperor Isaac Selassie the first. He who no man can see nor has seen, but has been revealed, mirrored, and personified. So he is he who man, no man can see nor has seen, but has been revealed, mirrored, and personified through the grace of the Holy Spirit operating within that mortal man, okay? And we are blessed to be those who have not seen. So let's go to John chapter 20, verse 29, okay? I'm, I'm, I hope we can all come deeper into the spirit and stop operating in the flesh. And when we look at his imperial majesty, stop seeing the flesh man and begin to see he who no man can see nor has seen, but has been revealed, mirrored, and personified in the new name of his imperial majesty, Emperor Ives of Isaac I. And that's the glory that, 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 that Christ deserves, him being uh, honored and glorified and, re and receiving that same glory that he, that he shared with his father before the world's before him, before mankind fell. And Christ had to come chasing after us and bringing this chaotic system back into order, okay? We're going to go to John chapter 20, verse 29, and it reads, Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because you have seen me, thou hast believed. You see, because you have seen, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. So we are those who have not seen, we have not seen Christ with our own hands and been able to touch and feel him, but we have recognized his revelation. We have recognized the revelation of Jesus Christ, okay? According to his word, according to the fulfillment of his testimonies in which he promised that he would send that Holy Spirit. You see, he promised that he would send that Holy Spirit, you understand? And a lot of us get caught up in Western Christianity and we have a misconception of the Holy Spirit and I want to show you how you know it's truly the Holy Spirit, okay? We're going to go to James chapter 2 verse 26, alright? And it reads, For as the body without the spirit is dead, so is faith without works. It's dead. So when we pay homage to the Holy Spirit, you must be paying homage to it operating within a body. You see what I'm saying? If it's the Holy Spirit and it's separate from a physical body, that's not the Holy Spirit. 
the Holy Spirit it, it will, will be revealed within a physical body, okay? Remember, because the body without the spirit is dead, okay? So that shows that the spirit operates legally through life, through life. So when we bear witness to the Holy Spirit, it has to operate within mortal man, through mortal man, to mortal man. And that's what we recognize in his imperial majesty, Emperor Alex Lassie the first. So just as Abram was a faithful, obedient believer, so must we be, okay? So let's go to Genesis chapter 12, verse 1, okay? And we're going to go into our study and hopefully gain a little bit of understanding of that faith that we need. We need to have this same sort of faith, okay? We need to accept that we have been called. And all of us in Rastafari have been called. And we've been called in this exact same nature. So this study will really bless us and strengthen our faith and empower us. Empower you to have a deeper, uh, uh, to, 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 to firmly root yourself in your faith. As a tree is firmly rooted within the earth, so must be we be firmly rooted within our faith. As that same tree reaches its branches up into the light of the sun, so must we reach unto the light of the sun, to the son of the only most high God, okay? To that son, to the true life. We have to, we have to, we have to reach, okay? And in us being willing to reach, we have to operate in obedience to our, to our call. And we've been called just as Abram has, has been called. Here we are at chapter 12, verse 1, and it reads, Now the Lord has said unto Abram, Get the out. Get the out. And this is the call that we have heard. We've been called out of the philosophies, out of the ideologies, out of the moralities of foreign conquerors. And these foreign conquerors have forced these ideologies upon us to, to appropriate lands and to appropriate uh, 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 a, a unrestricted control of indigenous people, okay? And with us recognizing them using those philosophies, ideologies, and moralities to appropriate a, 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 a full control over indigenous people, it's important that we take God's call and use that knowledge to build ourselves back up from where they, they have attempted to see us fall. They have attempted to see us fall from our heritage. They have attempted to see us fall from the right knowledge of the Most High God. But we have been called in the new name of his imperial majesty, Emperor Haile Selassie I. So we must answer to that call and get thee out of the philosophies and the ideologies and the moralities of foreign conquerors that some of our family may be taking part in. We're being called to get thee out of thy country. And what's interesting is in this verse when you see the word country, and this is another interesting thing about the Hebrew language. The Hebrew language draws no difference between the land, the word earth, the word land, and the word country. All these words, and even the, 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 the world, when you consider uh, expressing that definition, earth, country, land, and world, is all appropriated through the same word, which is erex, erex, okay? Erex, and this means land, world, earth, and country. So when we see here, when we see Abram being called to get thee out, in order to, when we see Abram being called to get thee out, this is how we have to operate. We have to get ourselves out of this land. We have to get ourselves out of this world. We have to operate as those who are not of this earth. We are strangers in pilgrimage. We are strangers in pilgrimage. When you're in a pilgrimage, you have a direct destination. And that direct destination is of a, a, a spiritual purpose. And not only is it of a spiritual purpose, but that means everywhere you go is not truly your home when you're a pilgrim, okay? And that's how we operate being strangers on this earth.